Golden Curry. Of all the instant curry brands, this is probably the most recognizable. It is from Japan, and as with many Japanese curries, it tends to be on the mild side, even when it says hot. If you're used to South Asian curry or Thai curry and you have anything but super mild, these are probably going to be um, a little bit on the mild side for you. But you know what? Not everything has to be spicy to be good. I happen to love spicy food, but I also have a soft spot in my heart for Japanese curry. This particular brand or this style of instant curry comes in pre-pressed blocks of roux. A roux is a mixture of an oil as well, I think. This is what I think of root, the definition of a root is, is like a mixture of a kind of oil or fat with flour and seasonings um, to act as a thickener for a sauce when you add liquid to it. In some cases, it can be cream or milk. In some cases, it can be stock or water. What this box wants you to do is to take some chunks of meat and vegetables and stir fry them in a large stock pot and then add water to that, creating effectively just a little bit of a light broth. And then it wants you to add these pre-pressed blocks of curry to it, which will then cook with that water and create a very smooth curry or sauce or gravy to be eaten over rice. I had the idea to see what it would taste like if we had just made these blocks plain and to serve them over fries and tater tots with cheese as if it were the gravy of poutine because I love excuses to eat fries and tater tots. So let's just see if we can do it. And if it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's probably still gonna be good. Now, some of you might be saying, John, this is stoner food, to which I say, yes, that is correct. That is exactly what this is. And the rules of making stoner food dictate that it has to be something that is easy enough to do on an impulse. So what is not going to happen today is we're not gonna cut our own fries. We're not going to make our own tear tots from scratch. We're not going to even bring out the fryer oil to deep fry them. It has to be possible to do with minimal amount of effort. You should be able to come home after a full night of partying and have the wherewithal to pull this off. Because you're drunk enough to what, and hungry enough or high enough to want to put in the effort, but you probably don't have the skill to actually do it from scratch. So what we do have is frozen fries and tater tots that we will oven bake. Um, you know, bake an oven. You can air fry it if you want, but what we're not gonna do is like whip out the oil in a deep fryer. So we'll do that. And then while that bakes, we will compile the curry sauce by putting the blocks in some chicken broth or water, whatever you've got, and adding cheese on top of it with some green onions and some cilantro, and we're gonna give it a shot and see what it is that we've done. Originally, I had just wanted to do this with fries because I was like, ah, oh, curry fries, that sounds amazing. But I saw these right next to them and I was like, oh, we need to do a side-by-side -side comparison. I wonder if the cooking instructions are even the same. 18 to 20 minutes. 18 to 20 minutes. So the cooking times are the same. The cooking temperatures are the same. Yeah, we can do a side-by-side -side comparison without sacrificing one for the other. other. Giving them all their best chance by not crowding your pan, having it all in a single layer. And that's really all there is to that. Put in this in the oven for 15 minutes. Or I should say check in after 15 minutes. So this says five cups of water for a whole box. I don't think we'll need, since we're not using this as a curry curry, I think this will only need half that amount. So.
Uh, and we'll do chicken stock since we're not doing any like vegetables or beef or whatnot. So, well, mix the chicken stock in water then. There we go. So, it wants you to break these off into blocks. It looks like giant things of chocolate. While that's boiling, you can cut your scallions. Oh look, it's boiling. Bring it down to a simmer and add the blocks in. Okay, now that the blocks have fully melted, we've got almost like a suspiciously smooth, almost like gel-like consistency, but that is normal for this type of curry. Um, let it simmer a little bit more and thicken on low heat as we prepare everything else. But I say that, but everything else is already like prepared. We're just waiting at this point. So we've got about, said 15 to 20 minutes. I did not set a timer. There we go. Tots and fries. Wow, hot. For this, I thought a store-bought Mexican four cheese would work. If you wanted to get fancy and use like some aged Gruyere or Parmesan or extra sharp cheddar, go ahead. But again, we're going for easy. It looks like poutine. I think in New York there is something called, or like New Jersey, there's something called disco fries, which is like pretty much poutine, but with like cheddar cheese. Don't quote me on that. Um, as I had said before, Japanese curry, when paired with like Western cheeses, is the best curry to use because of its mildness. Um, obviously, when you're talking about like South Asian cheeses like paneer and stuff, any curry would work. But when it comes to like the pungency of Western cheeses, I think Japanese curry does a good job in not competing with it. Oh boy. What have I done? What am I doing? Fun fact, the herbs make it healthy. This is science. I hate how good that looks. This would be so good at a bar served on some like paper boats and just, I already know. Oh no, it's so good. <laughs> it tastes like actually spicy poutine. It's got that like gravy 
like quality, that flavor to it. Funny enough, if you were my friend kimchi, she would say that this would need like a pickly element to it. Um, also, the, uh, what I say? The gravy, uh, not gravy. The curry is salty enough on its own and the cheese is salty enough on its own. You don't actually have to salt either the fries or the tater tots because it might be a little over, be a little over salty right now, but it's still really good. And like, I see this happening for a Super Bowl party. I see this happening for like a get together. Hmm. I can't decide which one I like more though. This is more satisfying, but these stay crunchier. These do a better job in staying like crispy. So I think I'm gonna move fries. I think the fries are better than the tater tots, but you should decide for yourself. I mean, this is the easiest thing to make on my channel. So I think you guys should at the very least try making these. I'm done.